Fallout New Vegas is a role-playing game released in 2010, created by Obsidian, but more specifically, these really talented people, who were responsible for making the first two Fallout games. So basically, Bethesda made Fallout 3, and got Obsidian to make another Fallout game. The aroma is a bit special. Okay, right off the bat, I'm gonna tell you. Fallout New Vegas is one of the best Western RPGs out there. It has everything that makes an RPG great. Interesting world, great characters and dialogue, stats, meaningful player choices and agency, combat, a big iron on your hip. If all you want is a recommendation, go play it. It's terrific and it's cheap. But aside from that, let us commence forth. Awe, true to Kaisar. We're given a brief introduction on prominent locations, factions, and characters. What I like about this intro is that you may not know who or what is shown to you, but you can get a pretty good idea of how they and this world operates. The bright lights, along with the drunken carefree soldiers, show the safety of the New Vegas Strip, while panning out, the dark and gloomy outside shows a lawless and dangerous environment. Two major factions are shown, the NCR, which comes off as undisciplined as their soldiers stumble around inside their safe haven and only the elite doing any real work. While Caesar's Legion operates like a well-oiled machine out in this dangerous world, as if they're always prepared for battle. It's such a great way to introduce new and old fans to this location, without the need for words. And then Ron Perlman does the exact opposite over a slideshow. Dedicated to old world values of democracy. And even though it's goddamn Ron Perlman, it totally ruins the player's introduction to the world. As everything he says, you can easily learn in the game through talking to characters and experiencing it all yourself. Anyway, you are a courier, and while on a very important job to deliver a platinum chip, you're ambushed by Chandler. Sometimes I wish I was a lesbian. Did I say that out loud? So this game takes place in modern day America, exactly one day after the last episode of Friends aired. And in order to see his friends again, Chandler will do anything. He domes you, and you wake up, where Dr. Phil runs you through the character creation process. Take it slow now, it ain't a race. You're looking good so far. You can distribute points in the classic special stats, so I think I will play as a TikTok user. <laughs> Almost done here. What do you say you have a look at this? Tell me what you see. No, 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 no. Yes, 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 yes. You can also pick a couple of traits, which are optional, but give a plus and a downside. Choose this one. There are no downsides to choosing this one. Once you leave, you are free to go anywhere in the world. Oh, yo, New Vegas is pretty close. Let's just walk over there, mate. We start in Good Springs, which is one of my favorite tutorial areas in a game because. But it doesn't feel like a tutorial. It still teaches you everything you need to know. Here you get to know the locals and learn how to shoot and talk. The main gameplay loop. You don't like something? Shoot. You like something? Talk. You don't like them after talking? Fuck out of here! Shoot. Because you're able to kill anyone in this game. Anyone. You also get to learn about skill checks during dialogue. As you often come up against one which requires a certain level and a particular skill to pass. Thank you, sir. So, for example, if you have enough points and explosives, Easy Pete here will give you some dynamite. If you don't, he won't. Are you out of your mind? If your sneak skill is high enough, though, you can give him some dynamite. Run! The good thing about the system is that it rewards your commitment to skills, but not outright punishing you for not investing points in others. Because there's typically other ways to go about situations. Not enough sneak to convince Trudy? Convince her using speech. Not enough barter for Chet to give you some supplies? Fuck you, TV. All good, just steal it. That doesn't it's this sort of design that makes this game so rewarding and fun to play, not to mention the stupid amount of replayability. Good Springs ends with a shootout between the locals and the powder gangs, which introduces you to the faction system. It's basically a way better version of the karma system, where instead of being a good, neutral or evil character, each faction will view you differently, based on what you do for or to them. You can join either side, and whoever wins keeps Good Springs. One side will hate you, and the other will like you. It's a great system which shows the player's influence on the world, without painting them as an outright good or evil character. Like I said before, you're free to explore wherever you want, but another great thing New Vegas does is nudge you in the direction that will teach you more about the world and factions, simply through good game design. Some areas of the world are populated by tough enemies, which don't stop the player from exploring, but encourage them to stay away and come back when they're stronger. And this makes the world so much more interesting, while getting the player psyched to fight them when they've got enough firepower. Enemies also zone scale with the player, so it gives a real feeling 
natural progression when you return to Kazador Canyon with 20 more levels and some fly spray. So with the north road out of the question, it's a good idea to follow Chan's trail down south, which will introduce you to enemies you can handle, as well as the two main factions of the game, the NCR and Caesar's Legion. Now as I mentioned about Ron Pillman's exposition dump, you can learn so much about these guys just from talking to people and experiencing it in the world. The powder gangs have taken over the town of Prim down the road, and the NCR are just chilling outside because they haven't been given orders from up top to go in. Yeah. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. So you yourself just roll up. Easy. Oh, we need a new shift, but if the NCR takes up that role, we we'll have to pay taxes and shit. Yeah, that shit is. Let me just uh, reprogram the cowboy robot. Yeah. Head on over to the outpost, and they've got no soldiers to kill some ants. Oh yeah, guess the mailman will have to do it then, eh? You can tell that the NCR is full of incompetent soldiers, while being heavily undermanned and with no sense of management. Head on down to Nipton, however, and it's a whole different story. Walking into town, you can immediately tell these guys are serious and ruthless. The way the soldiers form around their leader shows their discipline. Just the complete opposite of the NCR. Look at this shit. The leader, Volpez, goes on about the Legion's ideals and why they slaughtered everyone in town. And it really sells a faction as a major threat to the Mojave. These introductions are a great way to get the player thinking about these two factions, as you'll get the chance to join them later on. This is all very one-sided, surface level stuff though, and you'll get to learn much more about them as you play through the game. Here's where I can bring up another cool thing. Killing people. D don't call the police. Please, let me explain. As stated, you may kill anyone in this game. Random NPCs shooting each other over some bottle caps? Allow me to join in. Sasuke after he wins the lottery? Man with broken legs? Awesome! This might change nothing, or you might fail a quest, but it's really fun. Now in any other game, Volpez would be an unkillable NPC, because he's important to a quest line. However, this is Fallout New Vegas, and I really like his hat. <coughs> Sorry, my hat. Volpez is an important character though, and characters from Caesar's Legion will actually acknowledge his death even the final boss, which just helps to add to the player's agency in the world, and shows how keen the devs were to push this idea. The freedom this brings the player is unparalleled. The story will keep going on no matter who you kill, and I don't know any other game that does this. Yeah, speaking of killing people, combat. You will either absolutely despise how jank and unimpactful the combat is, or unconditionally love it. You don't aim your gun in this game, you just point it in their general direction and hope it hits. What's the feedback for hitting a target? Oh, for Oh well, we can always use vets, just gotta uh, wait for it to load, alright cool. If you can put up before that, you get some of the most gruesome and strangely satisfying combat in an RPG. You can shoot specific body parts to weaken an enemy's combat effectiveness, like slowing their speed to a crawl or straight up shooting their gun right out of their hands. You'll be carrying around a whole lot of different guns and explosives, swapping through them during combat as the situation requires. Like a shotgun for when an enemy gets too close, grenades for when there's too many other bastards, or a revolver for when someone tries to match you with a big iron on your hip. There's a ton of different weapons to use from standard guns to energy weapons, melee weapons, explosives, miniature nuke launchers, what's not to love? You're constantly on the lookout for more ammo while exploring, and you can find or buy different types like armor piercing or pulse rounds that are good against different enemies. Hell, you can get explosive 50 cal bullets for your anti-material rifle, for when regular 50 cal bullets just aren't enough. Finally, the way enemies die in this game is just so satisfying. Point blank blasting someone with a shotgun or doming them with a rifle is the most over the top shit like ever, but it never gets old. Killing people and completing quests gives you XP, and every time you level up, you get to distribute points in any of these skills. Some make you better with weapons, and others for checks in the world, and in dialogue. Quiet lets you buy and sell for lower and higher respectively, lockpick lets you pick locks at these respective levels, medicine lets you heal more from skin packs, repair lets you... Shit, can't remember what that one does. Science lets you hack computers in this really tedious minigame. Honest, I've played Fallout games for like 10 years and I still don't know how this shit works. I just pick random words and back out and retry when I'm down to one guess left. Sneak makes you harder to detect while sneaking. Speech is the best skill, don't even try to disagree, you can beat the final boss with it. Survival is the worst skill, don't even try to disagree, it makes you heal more from food but that's all by drinking twice as much coke. And the rest make you better at using their associated weapons. Just about all these skills have dialogue checks at some point and it's so cool seeing these skills be useful outside of their intended purpose. Passing these checks feels so damn rewarding, even though it's just number bigger than required, press button. You feel like you've earned it. Even if you can't pass these checks though, the developers still give you the option of choosing and failing them, but the NPC will just not be impressed in the slightest. I can't tell you what the actual music for this game is like, because as soon as I get a pip boy, you already know I'm jamming to Radio New Vegas. This game isn't the same without these bangers playing. It really sets the tone for this game, 
As the world may be complete shit, but I'm having a grand old time killing idiots while heartaches by the number is bumping. What should be a rather depressing journey through a deserted wasteland is instead a bawling adventure through certified hood classic city. Quests are the main part of this game. The main quest being to find Chandler in the platinum chip, choose a faction, and fight for Hoover Dam. Sounds simple, but it's the characters and the side quests that make it all interesting, as they add heavily to the narrative and world building. When you come across a side quest in this game, you do it, not for the XP, but because they're just so goddamn good and varied. So I'll quickly run through the quest I did on the way to New Vegas and finding Chandler. Novak, it's home for me now. But the only resource we got here is junk. Without that, people wouldn't have anything to trade. We get most of it up the road from the old rocket test site, but a bunch of ghouls showed up one day and took it over. We can't get in there now. It doesn't matter to me what you do. As long as the ghouls are out of there, that's good enough for me. Hello, Wanderer. Please forgive us our humble surroundings. Will you drive away the demons, Wanderer? Antler says, you must die. <laughs> there is no way that we can thank you enough, Wanderer. Your arrival here was a blessing. We will remember you always. My wife was taken from our home by Legion slavers one night while I was on watch. Someone set it up. I don't know who. Bring him out in front of the nest here while I'm on duty. I'll give you my NCR beret to put on. It'll be our signal so I know you're standing with him. And I'll take care of the rest. That's it then. How did you know? I don't know if you know, but since Jeannie May passed, I've been keeping an eye on her properties for her. I think it's time we gave everything back to you, so take this key and make yourself at home at our motel. Maybe we should take steps to avoid another embarrassing moment, but I think it might be better if I had my own bathroom, don't you? The Kaisar has marked you for death, and the Legion obeys. Ready yourself for battle. Shoot this motherfucker! Well, see, we're getting power because the guy running this place is fantastic. But the mirrors outside aren't aimed right, so we're running at 1% efficiency. And I guess that just isn't good enough for some assholes. You'd have to get them to talk to the mainframe up in the tower, then do the rest from up there. As long as the power of this plant is committed to the regional grid and not to a weapon, we are safe. As long as the power of this plant is committed to the regional grid and not to a weapon. Well, what does this do? You've got three days to improve your reputation with the NCR or we come for you. Oh, shiver my timbers! Shut up, man! When you see... Evening. What the fuck are you doing? My brother died at the Battle of Hoover Dam. You're desecrating a war memorial. Oh, no, it's on. Wow! Hey, there's the high roller. What in the goddamn? Crazy bitch. So, I guess this is it. <laughs> the city of New Vegas is run by Mr. House. Bitch, if I have to, you know why. Am I still streaming? 
I would hope not. He was one of the most interesting characters I've encountered in the game. He's a super driven and calculating man, being an entrepreneur before the war and managing to save most of Las Vegas from the nukes and preserving his body. Talking to this guy about history, his views on factions and current affairs, or his motivations are so enthralling. Even if you don't plan on working for him, I highly advise you at least hear what he has to say, because it's this sort of dialogue that has continued people to discuss which faction is the best for the Mojave, even a decade after the game's release. Yeah, funny how a static PNG on the screen can be 10 times more engaging than a fully motion cap character with infinite body and facial expressions, dynamic camera angles, and tone setting music. So he's one of the major factions you can join, the others being the NCR, Caesar's Legion, and the other being independent, but I'll let you find out about that one on your own. Hey buddy, I think you got the wrong door. Mr. House wants you to use the platinum chip to awaken a robot army near Hoover Dam, which will also upgrade his existing robots, like Victor, to be far more combat effective, allowing him to easily kick out the Entia and the Legion from the Mojave. Now, you could go to see Mr. House after getting the platinum chip, where he will get you to do this, or you could go straight to Caesar's camp, kill everyone, yep, including Caesar himself, and descend into the bunker where he reacts to the player's freedom of exploration. Plug in the chip. Now House wants us to do some quests before the final battle, a lot of which involve some of the lesser factions, so I'll quickly explain them. Obviously, there's a lot more to them, and the quests are great. Killer convinced the boomers to join you. Well, I've already gained their trust, so I'll just go ox. You can actually finish or fail a lot of these quests before Mr. House even asks you to do them, so let me show you how the game reacts to the player's freedom. I've already gone to Gamora and killed the leader of the Omertes. I've already blown up the Brotherhood of Steel base. You have? I've killed a shitload of NCR and really pissed them off. What's wrong with you? Shit like this just shows how much freedom the devs gave the player, and weren't afraid of them missing out on content. It makes it feel like the player revolves around the world, not the other way around. And with all that done, we fight through Hoover Dam, install some incriminating hentai, and take out the Legion's top field commander, Legit Lanius. And yeah, you can beat the final boss of level 100 speech. But it's not just some lame, talk no jutsu bullshit. It's facts and logic to persuade a warmonger dead set on taking over the Mojave, making him see the wisdom in your words, and pulling back to halt the inevitable fall of the Legion following the dam's takeover. After that, the NCR commander, General Lee Oliver, shows up and is like, you son of a bitch. But we don't clasp our muscular arms with him. Instead, we read his terms of surrender and use our level 100 speech to tell him to get the fuck out of here. You better run. You are not putting that on again. Marcel, okay, if you press that button, you are in very, very big trouble. And yeah, that's Fallout New Vegas, one of the best games I've ever played, and I already know I'm going to keep replaying it until Fallout New Vegas 2 gets made. Come on, Phil, make it happen for the boys! Cool, talked about everything I wanted to... Oh shit, I forgot about companions. Uh, yep, they're really well written and uh, they all have great crews. Uh, here's a quick explanation of them. Right? There's a lot more about this game that I didn't go over in this video, but that's for you to find. But yeah, can't recommend it enough, it's cheap as, and all I can really say is, you're still as perfect as the day we met. Stay classy, Vegas.